Hi everyone, Jamie Humphries here for Six String Alliance and today we have an incredibly special guest joining us on the channel. This is someone that I've known for around 20 years, uh, a huge influence on me with that through my career, how I play the guitar, the choice of guitars and even how I present myself uh, in musical situations. He's an incredibly phenomenal guitar player with incredible technical prowess. As a band leader, he led the Dixie Dregs. He's had an incredible solo career, also been part of bands such as Kansas, Flying Colors, and also Deep Purple. So I would, it gives me great honor and pleasure to present Steve Morse. Thank you, Steve, so much for coming on thank, the channel. Thank you, Jamie, and hello, everybody. <laughs> So I have to just let the, the the people watching, this is actually the second day in a row that Steve and I have chatted because we were plagued with internet problems yesterday and we managed to get around them and then right at the last minute, uh, QuickTime managed to uh, <laughs> end our uh, our cunning plan of managing to record uh, the, the interview. But We've got really good in, uh, internet today, so I think this is. I think it was meant to be. I think it was fate. Yeah. So um, I, I just thought, I thought as as we've already done this once, Steve. I I thought that we'd probably just cut straight to the chase. And um, you've just with Deep Purple released a new album, and this is a very very different album from anything you've you've ever done before because it's it's a it's an album of cover versions. Yeah, and a lot of them too. I, I think we had something like seventeen or eighteen total tunes that that I was working on. Anyway, Bob Ezra and our producer gave out. He just kind of divided them up according to what he thought, you know, uh, people would be good at. And in my case, I volunteered to do the Fleetwood Mac, the Yardbirds, mm. and. Uh, of course, Eric Clapton with Cream and uh, a, an old rock and roll tune that I always loved called Lucifer by Bob Seger. And, you know, something that I, I heard him play when I was a kid, heard him play live at the, you know, one of the pop festivals, the year of Woodstock. And it stuck with me. So I said, that's, that's got to be a good tune. And, uh, then we also we did some more, uh, but those are the first ones that, that just jumped in my head. And uh, then we did different versions of things. So instead of just doing a straight cover, a lot of times mine would, you know, I would just say, well, I think the actual composers of this song really meant to do this. <laughs> <laughs> So I got like a counterpoint <laughs> section in uh, the Bob Seger tune and, and this crazy kind of uh, too many notes, like chase yeah. scene almost in, uh, oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that was a real standout for me because I'm obviously very, very familiar with that track. And then it went into this section and I was just like, this is just geni genius. It was just skipping backwards and forwards. It's just these beautiful arpeggios that, because the rest of the track, you're, 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 you, you're kind of nodding to the sound and the style of the originals, but you're also adding your own, own sound and own flavor to the tracks as well. Was that a, a real conscious decision that you just weren't going to make a straight ahead cover version of a track? Well, it's just what you get when you involve me with something. It's, it's kind of like inviting your talkative uncle over for dinner. <laughs> He's going to talk. <laughs> I write music and I can't help it. And I, yeah. I tend to make suggestions in any setting. And so when they give me the demo, in other words, I using robot uh, bass drums and, and organ, I would just put together the whole track you know, mm -hmm. from scratch and then send it to Bob. And if he approved of it, you know, or he, he would usually say, make this change and, you know, change and, you know, work with the arrangement a little bit, then go ahead and send it to everybody or send mm -hmm. it to his guy yes. who would, who would fan it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, so having that kind of control all of a sudden, you know, it's like, 
it's like putting me back in the days yeah. when I could just write stuff yeah. and it would at least get tried. Yeah. I was it, you know, wouldn't always live on yeah. the album, but at least it would get tried. So I thought, Hey, let's, let's just <laughs> have some fun. Yeah. Let's finish the thought here. Yeah. Because it must've been a, a different, because the whole thing, I should just let, let everybody know that the, 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 everybody recorded remotely, didn't they? You, you, yeah. You, and were you, yeah. were, uh, it, it was a got, COVID thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was your lockdown album. Um, so you know when you when you were doing this, all of the arrangements you did everything whilst in 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 uh, in, in lockdown. Well, it, it wasn't. It's since I live in Florida, we didn't really have that much of a lockdown. We did have a lockdown. Mm. Like when I came back from our last Purple gig that we did. Yeah. Still, the last gig we did. It was uh, from Mexico City, and I, I came home and didn't even go in the house. Right. I went straight into the the RV. Yeah, RV is recreational vehicle. Yes, for those of you in, in other countries, and you British people say caravan. Yes, and a lot of of English speaking Europeans say caravan or, or combi. Combi is a motorhome. Yeah, and. Uh, so in this case, it was motorhome. I, I just went straight to the motorhome, pull it out, uh, you know, set it up and um, made myself comfortable for 14 days. Because that yeah. back then, this was like, uh, you know, the beginning of a epidemic of, you know, mm. we didn't know if it was like Ebola or what. So, yeah, I was really locked down. They were leaving food out in front of the the motorhome and I would like wait till they're gone and then go get it like I was some kind of zombie or something or, or a werewolf. <laughs> so what what did your day consist of in that time? Do you had your guitar with you? Were you doing some some uh you know working on ideas for tunes and practicing or oh yeah, just, yeah yeah I, my place is, is great set up for that because I can go from the motorhome without going to the house, go into the hangar where the workshop is and that leads into the uh, studio. Right. So I had access to, you know, all my uh, projects and toys. So, yeah. yeah, you know, bedtime was was just a random time every day or night. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, I, I find myself working and it's like, man, it's 530 in the morning. I should probably go to bed. <laughs> 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 yeah so um uh when, so when you were like throwing the ideas around so would would were you on like skype or zoom calls with the other band members just you know pushing pushing tracks about and ideas about would would ian pace come back with a drum groove oh i've i've had an idea for an arrangement or and and would you demo that way well what we found out with manager producer and five band members that a conference phone call worked the best because mm. there's so many technical problems with having you know um well just laymen mm. doing their own you know uh zoom hookup because you need a certain amount of bandwidth yeah and we need less bandwidth to have a phone call and usually the soul carries where I am, the, the cell phones are more reliable than the, than the internet. Yes. However, for for uh, sharing the ideas, we just the ideas we send it to Bob's um, engineer. Yes. And he would make sure that everything is in the same format, same bits per second, same sample rate, mm. and then distribute it. And and as well as leveling out things like. Um, you know, making sure the volumes of the, of the MP3s or whatever, if we're just doing roughs, yes, make sure they're all about the same. And so that that worked the best. So it was a little bit less chaotic that way. And by having Bob involved at you know at that stage, mm. it kept from so much of the thing of you know, like Roger saying, well. I thought we should, I thought I had an extra verse there. Mm. And then uh, I say, well, I only had two verses there uh, from the copy you gave me. And then Bob saying, well, wait a minute, don't send him a copy, send, send it to me and let me, uh, let me arrange it. And then we'll send out a standardized thing. Yes. 
you, everybody has to be on the same page with all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. But we we didn't have many problems. What several times the key got changed, you know, after I I had recorded a song yeah. you know, <laughs> and done everything. It's like, don't. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I got to bring it uh, to a different key, but no problem. You know that yeah. that's that's part of why you demo stuff out. Yeah, yeah. And so in terms of recording, you handled, you were re- recording engineer and, and guitar player. You did all of the parts uh, yourself from your own studio? Yeah, yeah. Like about a billion other guitar players, you yeah. know, you, you just get used to doing your own stuff. So it's, and, well, and when, when you record randomly, like I do, and, you know, one thirty in the morning, I'll go work in the studio for a little bit. You know, you don't, you wouldn't call somebody up and say, hey, would you drive down yeah. to my town and, and sit here for 45 minutes? Yeah, yeah. What, um, so when, when you're recording, um, you were using this, this was something that we spoke about yesterday. It's a bit of deja vu. Um, but the, uh, you, I was quite surprised when you told me that you actually record with your, the, 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 the wet, dry, set up blending the the effects in that you you record with that as well yes with bob ezrin i normally do and part of that is just having the luxury of having tommy my my tech who's a great guitar player by the way Mm. set up everything and being in studios you know these these big nashville studios where there's enough room and isolation to do that yeah Yeah. it's also good i think for bob to hear where i would put the delays and stuff because one thing i've noticed over the years over the decades i should say of recording is that whenever i say or or, excuse me whenever i listen to the advice i'm told which is oh no just record it dry don't put any fades we'll do all that we'll put the effects in okay Yes, it's possible that you can get a cleaner sound if you record it dry and they do the fades and they do the effects. However, if you go back and check, a lot of the times, not not everything you thought was going to be in there is going to be in there. So if you're not part of the mixing process, try and influence the sound as much as you can yeah yeah it's a good that's a really good bit of advice actually because there's I'm, nothing i'm trying not to i'm trying to pick my words carefully <laughs> no but it is one of uh, you know to uh, and i guess also the way that you have your setup having a, a a wet dry wet a wet dry uh setup mic'd up uh with however many mics that's going to be, you know, you're going to have a dry channel. Say if it, say it was one mic on each, you're going to have a dry channel. You're going to have a wet channel. So it's not like it's, you know, if, if there is, you do change your mind after the event, you can, there's still the room to, uh, uh, to make alterations. It's not like you're printing a stereo guitar track where it, it's, it's, it, it, the signals are coming out the same speaker, I guess is, is what yeah. I'm trying to say. But plenty of times I do that. Yeah. Where, where they get, they get the part and there's just here's there's delay on it. You just yeah. hear reverb on it. You just have to deal with it. What, and what? I find that that's people are like, oh man, doesn't this as this guy from such a small town, he doesn't know the basics of recording. But they end up <laughs> using it and it works fine. Yeah. It works really good that way. Yeah. But but they always start with, you know, that's not the way we do it in the big city. Yeah. And and I say, well, yeah, but sometimes the big city people forget little details. I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you know, it's got it's your sound. That's what I I recognize your sound. You know, I think I think back to uh, I bought I bought three of your VHS videos. I bought I power lines. And oh, wow. there was, there were the, the complete styles. I think it was called. There was a series where there was a two volume, uh, uh, VHSs that I bought. Um, that was with a, a live band with Van, Van Remain on, on drums and, uh, 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 Dave LaRue. Uh, yeah. Dave LaRue was on bass. That's it. And, um, and it was very apparent even on the power lines video because that video was the video that I, I bought. I was about 17 and that was the first time I saw a music man and was like, <gasps> 
you know, love, I love the look of it, but you were, you were on that video, you were, you know, playing and then you could audibly hear you bringing the effects in, fading the effects in. So that it's, I, I, I'm always kind of used to that sound with you. Yeah. I, I obviously like it because when you have presets, you know, you, you have a, a digital, mm. here's the sound, here's not the sound. And, and it's hard on the ears. Whereas when you fade it in and out, mm. When appropriate, it, it seems to, um, it just it seems more musical. That's all. Yeah. I, I, I have a, a, smart, a slight confession to my, it makes me sound a little bit fanboy, Steve, but as I've said to you, I, I've read your open ears book. Um, and I would advise any of you guys out there, get this copy of this book. It's just such a, it's, I always, it's like a great coffee table book. It's a, I, I used to have it as a nighttime read. You know, lots of great information and thoughts on playing music. Uh, but one of the things was that you explained in that book was about how to build the, how you run your rig. And I actually did it. I had a, um, a line selector pedal that I used like as a mixer. And then I, I just did it with a boss delay and a boss chorus pedal. And I had two, I think I just did it with one volume pedal. Uh, I, I can't, I can't, I think I did it with one and then I had two amp heads. And I used to fade it into another cab, and it was—it's a fantastic sound. I went through uh, a, a period of doing it. It's, it's uh, but now I tend to do the wet, dry, wet thing. But it, it was great having the effects just on on the Ernie Ball volume pedal. I, yeah, I, you know, when I do engineering here, you know, on one fader, you you would have dry mic, and then you know, you I would put effects up on other faders. Yeah, so. Why not, you know, be able to control that live too? Yeah, yeah. What um, what delays do you are you currently using? I use the smallest, best uh, combination for me is the TC Electronics flashback yes. delay, mm -hmm. and they allow uh, they have a library with the the settings and. Yes. I put in my own settings, you know, with the guys from TC and they, they, they have it on the internet. So it's crazy how you, you put the sounds in, but you buy the pedal and it's like in America, it's cheap. It's, it's, it's one of the cheap pedals, a little, you mm -hmm. know, yep, yep. MXR size. Yes. Yeah. A pedal. And it has several features that I really love, which is true bypass, mm. meaning that you can go straight through the pedal without having to to use the electronics or a buffer stage inside there, which a lot of pedals don't allow you to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's a dip switch in by the battery where you can change, uh, allow that or not. When mm -hmm. you do true bypass, you'll often get a click right. when, as you select it on and off. Yes. And that's why most companies don't like true bypass. Then they put buffer stages. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those buffer stages, just like, the the engineer saying no no we'll do the effects later the buffer stage you can't hear it you mm. can't tell yeah all right well yeah you can't tell unless you're playing a loud amp mm. and w with a lot of gain then yes you can tell <laughs> yeah so uh there's some insertion loss with with anything but mm. So I like effects that, that allow you to bypass it. Yeah. And then the other thing, the really cool thing that they have is a, is a switch that allows the amount of delay on the, on the uh, knob to go from zero to 50%, which is normal. So that if you turn the delay up all the way, you would, and you were using it inline, like guitar delay amp, mm. that when you turned the delay all the way up, it would be like, Dry delay, delay, yeah. delay, delay, dry delay, delay, mm -hmm. delay. To where the the delay would be just as loud as the dry. Yeah. Now the way that I like to use it, it with my rig is to set it to where when you turn it all the way up, there's nothing but delay. There's no dry. Yes, and they call that in in TC uh, speak. They call that dry kill, mm -hmm. which is a great name, dry kill. So there's a, a dip switch um, in inside the, the the delay that you can um, 
select to do to have dry kill, which means your volume goes from no delay and then no dry to yeah. all delay and no dry. Right. Right. So that's that's the setting I use. The way that I normally load the sounds or the tone prints or the settings for the TC flashback delay is by using the, the smartphone, you know, just download yes. the the Steve Morse tone print. And that that's a very versatile one because you can use it for short delays or long delays. It's got a little bit of modulation mm. so that it, it sounds, you know, not not too clinical. And it's got yes. a little bit of round off of the high end. So it, it doesn't again, it's so it doesn't sound so clinical. And it's 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 uh you know I fashioned it over uh kind of like a tape delay. So when I when I put the sound uh into the you know load with the the TC app on the phone, you put the phone up to the the pickup of the guitar. Yeah. I, I use the uh single coil pickups, but you it'll even work with a humbucket. So the digital noise that it makes it you know translates through the pickup and at the same time you you've got a chord from your guitar going into the de- the delay pedal and it will actually get all the settings you know perfectly in a digital form yeah. onto the onto the pedal and then so you've got all the presets that came with the pedal plus the one custom the tone print area right and of course that's where i leave mine all the time and uh so i have one short and one long with a volume mm-hmm. pedal Ernie Ball volume pedal for each one of those. And yeah. that's the that's the basis of my live sound. Yeah. And you're obviously for for your live rig, you're using uh your signature Engel amplifiers. Yes. You've been with Engel for quite a while now, haven't you? Yes. And uh Michael Berger, a, a, a very smart German guy, was my tech at the time. And it, mm. he he just he strongly suggested that I just try it. Mm. And I had been exploring the, the 5150, the Ampegs, the Marshall 800, and then a Marshall t- uh, 2000, three-channel mm. version. And it would use all these with Deep Purple. But when I tried the angle, something different happened. It was like, right. this has got a clarity in the high end that I really love. But one thing I'm missing is is a little bit of the mid, mm. you know. And so Horst, the designer, Horst German, and he's he's a wonderful guy. That it, it's actually a, a a fun company like like Ernie mm. Ball. But they um, Horst actually brought breadboarded out all the components to the to the side of the stage and, and said, "Here, set set the tone centers." using these controls mm. where you would like to see them. And and we did that several times and uh, we're able to come up with, I think the best clean sound on one channel, the best all around rock, you know, sound that'll cl- they'll clean up when you turn it down, but get great distortion when you turn it up. And then my, the third channel is, was custom just for me where there's four, four different mid range knobs yeah. where you can influence the mid range without, introducing an artificial uh, eq stage it's it's right. all, all the mid-range that he could coax out of tubes yeah and uh, and still have that that angle clarity mm. so i you know it's wonderful and, it, and it, it's it's a big heavy amp but you know hopefully yeah. they'll, they'll take my advice and and they're working on a smaller one yeah i've been it's 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 funny you've mentioned the smaller one because i'm i'm really good friends with jürgen from uh from engel and yeah, uh, yeah. and a uh, martin as well and we'd sort of spoken about some some stuff and uh uh i said to him uh i need to get a steve Moore signature model in my in my studio so uh, uh at some point i'm hopefully we'll get uh get one of your amps in it because i played one and it's fantastic that's it, the thing with with your gu- with your guitar sound steve you're not afraid of mid-range You've always had a really sweet mid range in your tone. I think it, it's, and it makes you it, very, 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 mis, you know, unmistakable with your sound. It's where the high notes sing the best. Yeah. 
but you can also go. You can get high end with it too. So um, while while uh, while while we're just talking about gear, in in uh, I want to talk about the guitar in a moment. I know we always talk about your guitar, but I'm such a huge fan of that guitar. When when you were um, recording the new Purple album, um, and you were re- recording remotely, so you were doing the wet dry setup. Um, but what what amplifiers? You mentioned that you were using a different amplifier in the angle range for the effects. Oh yeah, yeah. At the time, I only had one of my signature head, so I used a an angle uh, the the little studio the little, iron yeah, bolt. Yeah, yeah. Did you and um, have you experimented with the um, the impulse responses, the direct out on that, or were you using all cabinets? I was using uh, mic and cabinets, and part, you know, part of the 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 neat thing about recording that way is you get you know room reflections, you get interaction of this cabinet. Mm-hmm through this mic and this cabinet leaks a little bit through that mic Mm. and you know it it's harder to um to go back and reproduce that because you know every time you set it up it's going to be different and for some reason i like recording that way where every sound every song maybe has something unique and different about Mm. it to discourage me or anybody else from saying oh let's just go and change this yeah what um what what mics are you using on your cabinets when you're recording in the studio in in your studio that is um i have i like the uh akg um the one that looks like a shaver i can't remember the, right. the numbers of it's been so many years since i since i bought it i mean so many decades <laughs> since i bought it the you know, with it's got a, a screen front and yep. back. It's a large diaphragm um, a condenser, kind of warm sounding. Right. Okay. And then I also use the uh, the vocal mics, the just mm. the regular old dynamic. Oh, okay. So you are doing mics, a, a condenser. Like sure. Yeah. Yeah. So a, a, a condenser and dynamic uh, combination on each cab. Yeah, and a Royer one hundred and twenty one ribbon mic. Oh, okay. Which, is, which doesn't really have as much color to it either way. Mm. It sounds, it sounds more like the cabinet to me than yeah. than any of the other mics. So I'll, I'll, I have them all coming up, and then, you know, just just change something randomly on you know with each, if I'm doing this uh, part here mm. in the song or part there in the song, I'll I'll use a different mic or maybe a different setting on the amp. Yeah, and I know, like I said, I like doing that so that it's it sort of seals the fate of the track to me. Mm. You you can't you can't punch it in easily. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh, I've, I've tried doing that sometimes on on uh, some live things where just you know just horrendous take. Yeah, with some some kind of big noise or flub up or whatever and i go in and try to fix it and it's it's really hard when you yeah. got all all different mics interacting with everything yeah 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 so i don't spend a lot of time trying to trying to do do that i, I like to finish a part and feel good about it and then move on move on yeah it's that again it's a, it's a good advice uh because otherwise you end up just procrastinating can i do this can i do that and i've actually in a similar situation, well, not a similar situation. Uh, it's a very, very mild, meager situation, but I'm, I've, I do a lot of demo tracks for my videos and I've amassed all this music. And I was thinking to myself, I'm going to put out an album of my demo tunes from my videos. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll go back and change this, that. And it's like, why change it? That was, that was then put it out, move on, do something else. I think it's, uh, it's a good mindset to have when you're making music. Otherwise, I think with your own studio, you can just forever be, you know, trying to get it exactly this way. Yeah. And, and one, of, one of my other, other philosophies is to, to try to be able to write stuff that I can play. Mm. And so that if I do want to change something, I just, I just record the whole thing over. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Remember, I remember one time I was, I was punching in Steve Walsh, the, the lead vocalist from Kansas. He was helping us out on a Dregs thing. Mm. a song called crank it up and, and i was 
just being merciless with endless takes and stuff. And, you know, got a lot of criticism from certain people for that, for that, but ended up being incredible, uh, choral vocal mm. section that he made. But yeah. I would say, Hey, can, can you just go back there? I just want to punch at this one note. He said, I'll just do the whole thing. He said, mm. I, I, I don't want to kill your voice. He said, I should be able to do it each time. I'm a musician, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was great. And he was yeah. the same way about play, playing his keyboard parts. Yeah. You know, just if you can't play it, why put it on the album? That's so, so, yeah. 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 That, you see? That's kind of neat, you know, and there are times when I'd stuff is hard and you just have to go back and, and do that section again. Mm. And uh, until, until, and if you're double tracking until they match up, you know, to where it's pleasing to the ear. Yeah. But in, anyway, my philosophy is if, if you got a good sound, and you, you like the part, then leave it. Yeah. If you're not sure of the part, then okay, change it. Well, but do you know? Do the whole, the whole thing over, and you yeah. might get a better performance. So we've spoken a, a bit about your rig and what you what you were recording. Obviously, um, the album was a, a, a lockdown album. You know, uh, rather an elaborate lockdown album, but a, a lockdown album, um, and everybody was working on their own. Um, w- I'm, as you know, Steve, from from conversations we've had over the years, like yourself, I'm a huge fan of Ernie Ball Music Man, and um, you're still using the same guitar. <laughs> exactly the same. <laughs> Look at that. Serial, that. serial number one. Oh, it's got man. some battle scars. But I, didn't you, sh- do, do I remember this correctly, that you shaved a bit off of the neck joint heel when you had your hand in a plaster cast? Yeah, yeah, it was. I had to have three different casts made. I, we we're going to Montreux to, re- to record yeah. or to play live and record. And the third, I, I was holding my guitar for the third cast. Yeah. And, and they, and they, they molded it around with me holding the neck. But then when I, when I went on, on, uh, to, there were these some warm up gigs with my band and the Dregs, where we, my band opened for the Dregs. So I was, and then we did double shows. So I was doing four sets a night. Jesus. And my hand was hitting, the, the cast was hitting up here, and I couldn't quite hit the 15th position. I, yeah. I wanted to be able to get 17th position, but I couldn't. Yeah. But I said, at least I've got to hit 15th. And so between gigs, when we were going from uh, Lauderdale to my Atlanta, I was flying to Ben, so I flew back home here. Well, I do. I do have a landing strip at my place. It's just it's just a grass. <laughs> it's just a grass strip that I mow. So, but anyway, so awesome. it's so awesome. So I land. I tell the guys to go get lunch, and then here's the mods I made. First, first of all, I I, I put the guitar on the grinding. Yeah. Or I, I had an actual, you know, rotary grinder and, and just took off the, this edge. Yeah. And, and I cut into the screw and, and, and the metal plate also. That's why I used a metal grinding wheel, yeah. which doesn't work great for, for wood. So yeah. I used a rasp and then followed it with sandpaper. Then for my cast, I was getting all irritated and and bloody inside because from playing too many shows with the sweat and everything yeah so this is going to sound insane but i and this actually happened i'm left-handed the cast is on my left wrist so i'm using the drill with my right hand oh my god and drilling holes into the cast trying not to hit my my skin and uh <laughs> I didn't succeed in not hitting my skin, but, but I got the holes drilled. Yeah, yeah. And and they were uh, they were half inch holes. Then then I cut up this tubing that I had, clear yeah. tubing, into eight pieces, and then put uh, these barbs into a big PVC cap, mm. and, and and threaded them in there, and then put the eight pieces of tubing onto the cap onto the barbs. So the cap was designed to fit over a hairdryer in. Then I had eight holes that I drilled in, in my cast and my cast was pretty big all yeah. around here. So after each set, I would 
I, I carry talcum powder and I would pour talcum powder into the holes, plug in the, the eight hoses and put it over the uh, hair dryer and yeah. put it on light heat and full fan. And, and it would dry out my cast. Yeah. So I could play another show. So, so I'm just going to say this to the viewers out there. Next time any of you guys have a slight tickle in your throat and you want to pull your, your gig, listen to <laughs> this man here. Not only was he playing four shows with a cast and flying the band, he then made major modifications to the cast. That's, that's legendary stuff, Steve. That's fantastic. So what this- you, that was back in the day when, yeah. you know, you played the gig. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't that long ago. I mean, this this whole COVID thing has is, is canceled everything. But anybody in the band that was, you know, dying of the flu or whatever, they might send a doctor to, to give them some IV mm. fluids before the show. But, you you know, if you have enough, if you have a heartbeat, you're going on stage, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's get this. I'm sorry to to have uh, brought that up about the neck joint. I, what did Sterling say about that? That being num- the number one <laughs> guitar. Well, they they're very cool about it because the idea was the only restriction he gave me is that we're not going to stop until you're happy with it. Yeah, that's the only rules. That's the only contract we have. Yeah, you know. We don't want you playing something that you don't really like. And so I said, mm. that's awesome. Okay. I can deal yeah. with that. Yeah. So when, once I showed it to him and, and it, it was kind of ugly, um, they said, well, we could do that on the other guitars, you know, take out. And I said, well, what about staggering the screws? I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get the light. Yeah. yeah Instead yeah, of yeah. six to make uh, five screws uh, space more evenly, you know, yeah. and, and not even have this screw here at all and take off a little bit more. And so that's what they did. Ah. Yeah. So, so you the, can tell the vintage of a Ernie Ball, uh, at least my series of guitars, by whether yeah. or not it has six or five um, wood Oaks, screws in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was talking to Derek recently, actually, because I saw um, – one of your models on the website and uh, it was like a, the blue color one. It has, I, I love that, the, the Morse blue, but it was like a sparkle finish. That looked awesome. It was a, I don't know if it was a custom uh, spray job or whether it was the, the, a new, a new finish, but uh, I, I, at some point I, I need to get another one in my life. Yeah. I was trying to see if I had one right, right with me. No, I don't, I don't want to have one right here yeah. in this room. But yeah, yeah they, they do some beautiful finishes. My, my Y2D finishes are yeah, you know, yeah. They're like the you know guitars you see at Nam with really beautiful, mm. um, you know, wood grain and all that. Personally, I'm obviously not a design guy. You know, yeah. To, to me, the guitar is all about function. It's 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 got to be a, a comfortable uh, device to yes. You know, get take your inner heart and soul and bring it to the audience or to the recording studio or whatever. Mm. So I, I never look at the guitar when I'm playing, unless I'm looking at the neck, maybe to just to check and see if yeah. I'm shifting to the right position. Uh, it's a, it's a fantastic, it's a very unique instrument. Your, your guitar. It's versatile. I, I, I play this guitar with the four pickups mm. uh, with flying colors, Dixie drag, Steve Morris band, Living Loud, Deep Purple. But with Deep Purple, I switch guitars because yeah. we have different tuning, we have different, and, and a little bit more of a straight rock band. But the other things where there's all kinds of variety of music, mm. especially the drags, um, I just keep the guitar yes. for the whole night. That's, yeah. all I, that's all I do. It, well, when I play classical stuff, I, I switch to electric classical guitar because yeah. it, it has the, the you know, nylon strings and the spacing to allow, mm. you know, me to use my regular classical guitar technique. 